welcome back to another breakdown and review of Loki. Now, normally we here at Fat Ninja Studios try to get these videos up as soon as the episode airs, but after finishing the series and then re-watching the entire thing, we had to reevaluate our theories for greater impact in the future of the MCU. So, in this video, we will be doing our usual breakdown and review, However, our theories will be in a separate video, which we'll link down in the description below. Since there's just too many to fit in this video, or it would be like an hour long. We will also be dropping a short video discussing the recently released Black Widow film. Again, we want to thank you all for checking back every week. We hope to see more interaction with you in the future through comments or our weekly Discord meetups. If you haven't yet, you should subscribe to our channel and tap the bell icon to stay up to date when we release content. I'm your host, Jackie Kay, and let's get right into the season finale of Loki. A quick recap of the previous episode, Loki has woken up in the void after being pruned by Renslayer and meeting several variants of himself. As he journeys along the destroyed landscape, trying to stay ahead of the creature Eliath, he learns of the various fates of different Lokis and decides to take out the massive smoke monster. He reunites with Sylvie, who pruned herself to escape Renslayer, and together they form a plan to enchant the beast. They are eventually successful, opening a rift that leads to a castle, the hideout of the being behind the sacred timeline. This episode starts off with a bunch of sound clips from the various MCU films playing as the Marvel logo comes on screen. This bleeds into showing the greater Marvel universe as it expands from a sun and collapses into a black hole and reforms again, an idea straight from the comics where the multiverse has died and been reborn at least seven times so far. We catch a quick glimpse of a ship hightailing it out of a shockwave as well as what looks like the Voyager satellite, and possibly the formation of a few Infinity Stones. We then look like we enter through the Eye of Eternity, exiting into the Rainbow Bridge before morphing into the Time Stream. A lot of this imagery just screams Jonathan Hickman's run on the Avengers, but we'll get to that in our theory video. After our psychedelic trip through the Marvel multiverse, we pick back up where episode 5 left off, Sylvie and Loki entering through the rift and approaching the castle. The castle is an amalgamation of Castle Tarnala and Castle Blackstone, and Citadel at the end of time. Inside, the pair are greeted by Miss Minutes, who tries to tempt them with promises of power and their own timelines to keep them from venturing further inside but this is mostly to test them on their character at the behest of the mysterious showrunner. They of course decline her offer and subsequently meet He Who Remains. Now, the true identity of He Who Remains is different in the show than it is from the comics. Here, it's Nathaniel Richards, a descendant of Reed Richards and Victor Von Doom's family lines. He was born in the 31st century got involved with time travel, and then, as he hopped around the multiverse, left behind variants of himself. It is important to know this is not Kang the Conqueror. Kang is essentially a variant of him, just like Alligator Loki is a variant of the main timeline Loki. We will dive deeper into Kang throughout our theory video, but suffice us to say, almost everyone's theories were wrong. This version of Nathaniel Richards is most closely based on Immortus. In the comics, Immortus is the version of Nathaniel who lived for millions of years and was eventually recruited by the TVA to monitor time, and often battled variant versions of himself, including Kang, Ramatut, and Scarlet Centurion. When a war broke out between the Time Keepers and the Time Twisters, Immortus was eventually defeated and used as a pawn, and even had a role to play in the seventh destruction of the multiverse during the Secret Wars event. In the MCU, however, during the battle for the multiverse, this version of Nathaniel came out on top and established the TVA, dubbing himself He Who Remains. 
and creating the myth of the timekeepers as all-knowing deities that it was easier to conscript people into his service, worrying that one day a variant of himself would rise up again and try to rule the multiverse he sets out to prune timelines that would eventually lead to a version of himself discovering time travel. Meanwhile, back at the TVA, Renslayer is trying to dig through info, and she's interrupted by Miss Minutes, who gives her some files, but not specifically the files she requested. Mobius pops in, has a little skirmish with Renslayer before she knocks him on his ass and goes off on her own adventure. B-15 jumps to a time period where a variant of Renslayer is a teacher and uses this as proof to the other Minutemen that they are all variants. Flashback to the castle, Sylvia and Loki accompany Nate Daniel to his office, and the bulk of this episode is pretty much exposition. Nathaniel begins to break down the formation of the TVA, his role in it, and the Great Multiversal War and that he's been looking for someone to take over because, frankly, he's tired of doing this job. He gives them two options, take over in his place and he'll go off and do whatever while they protect the timeline from variants of himself, or kill him and most definitely start another war. At this point, Loki truly believes him, especially after asking him questions about why he'd ever give up all the power he has which mimics the line of questions that Mobius threw at him the first time they met. Sylvie, on the other hand, is not so convinced, having spent her life on the run from the TVA and being betrayed by literally everyone she's ever known, with the exception of our Loki. So far, anyway. When she goes to kill him, Loki intervenes, and a pretty awesome fight breaks out between the two of them. She accuses him of wanting the throne for himself, which Loki responds by disarming himself and telling her he just wants to see her happy, but also doesn't want to be responsible for ending the multiverse simultaneously. Sylvie kisses him, but then opens a time portal and kicks him back through to the TVA. Inevitably, Sylvie kills Nathaniel, who laughs as he dies, telling her that he will see her soon as events tend to replay in the time stream, and reincarnation and resurrections are common in the Marvel Universe, as any Loki should know in particular. Cracks begin to form in the time stream just outside the window, and when we cut to the TVA, branches are forming all over the sacred timeline. Loki races through the library to try and get Mobius to help him stop Sylvie, but surprisingly, this Mobius has no knowledge of who Loki even is. Just then, we see a statue of what is presumably the Kang version of Nathaniel, in place of where the Timekeeper statues used to be. The episode ends, and the only after credits scene we get is a stamp on a file saying that Loki will return in Season 2. Altogether, this episode had some great reveals. It was just a little bit boring as well, as it was literally just Nathaniel sitting behind a desk, and expositing the entire story. We don't even get flashbacks to see multiple versions of him battling it out. Not even a cool little cartoon like the one Miss Minutes used in her propaganda video in the first episode. Nonetheless, this sets up quite a bit going forward in the MCU, most of which will play out now in the films, as the series won't be back until early to mid-2023. After the third Ant-Man installment, possibly leading into the Fantastic Four film. Yes, while we were wrong about Doctor Doom showing up at the end of this series, we realized that we jumped the gun a bit. We still think that Doom is going to be one of the major antagonists in the next MCU phases, alongside Kang and a few others, which we will discuss in our theory video. But that story is building up along Hickman's Avengers run first. Obviously, not all characters that appeared in those issues will make an appearance in the MCU films, much like how Civil War was initially condensed in the third of Captain America film, it eventually had a spillover effect which bled into the subsequent films. We still firmly believe that Phase 4 will basically be Time Runs Out, and that Phase 5 will be Secret Wars. 
Anyway, I'm going to give this episode a 7 out of 10, and the series as a whole an 8.5 out of 10. Episode 5 was by far our favorite, and this show is equally as enjoyable and filled with wonder as WandaVision was. Maybe down the line we might do a ranking of all the episodes of all the shows so far. Who knows? We can't wait to see the Hawkeye series coming up soon, as well as What If. Even though What If won't really have an impact on the MCU continuity, and of course in September, the release of Shang-Chi. Which, after reading Hickman's run on the Avengers, gave us a whole new load of theories. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, and make sure to subscribe to get more content. When we hit 100 subscribers, we will do a prize giveaway to a random subscriber of whatever the most current Marvel 4K film release is. If you want to reach out to us, you can either leave a comment down below, find us on Twitter at StudiosFat, or join our Discord, which we've linked down below. Again, thank you to those of you who have subscribed and who watch our videos. We appreciate it very much. We want to wish you all a great day, wherever you are. And remember, it's never a waste of time if you're spending time doing the things you love. Thanks again. Take care.